discuss about the women uh, the summary of the women and the economics a study of economic relation between men and women as a factor in social evolution in a book written by Charlotte <coughs> Parkins Gilman and published in 1898 it is considered by many to be her single greatest work and as with much of Gilman's writing the book touched a few dominant themes the transformation of marriage the family and the home with her central argument the economic independence and uh, specialization of women as essential to the improvement of marriage motherhood and domestic industry and racial improvement the 1890s were a period of in, uh, intense political debate and economic challenges with the women's movement seeking the vote or and other reforms women were entering the workforce in swelling numbers seeking new opportunities and shaping new definitions of themselves it was near the end of this uh, tumultuous decade and um, that Gilman's very popular book uh, emerged and the uh, book summary and the themes is, uh, is uh, centrally Gilman um, argues that women must change their cultural identities early on she mentions that humans are the only species in which the female has to depend on the male for survival this dependence requires women to pay off their debt through domestic service or sex functions gilman argues that women work longer and harder than most men and not solely in uh, maternal duties further gilman states that female activities in general are directed by men these sexual distinction have led to an odd distribution of power and have been uh, detrimental to both genders in Gilman's view, these sexual distractions have left women behind and allowed men to claim credit for human progress. Gilman argue, argues that women fulfill the uh, dual uh, roles of mother and martyr and pass these roles down to their children creating a continuing image of women as unpaid workers and uh, nurturers. This is turn has turned women's creative and personal growth. Gilman was a confirmed uh, suffragist but did not believe progress would happen if women were only given the vote. Progress was not measured only by states that allowed women to vote, but as well in the changes legal, social, mental, and physical, which marked the advance of the mother of the world towards her full place. Gilman also reflects on the uh, strange fact that uh, poorer women who can least afford it have more children while wealthy women who can afford it have fewer children. Gilman talks about the agricultural age when more children were needed to assist with farming. In the industrial age, however, more children result is more work for the mother. Gilman argued all these points but still believed motherhood was the common duty and the common glory of womanhood. And women would uh, choose a professions compatible, compatible with motherhood along with being uh, nurturers. Gilman argues that 
uh, women are also required to be ed um, educated. There is no proof in Gilman's opinion, however, that women who sacrifice to be nurturers and educators will produce better children. Gilman believes that others can assist with these tasks or even do them more effect effectively. Gilman was one of the first to propose the uh, professionalization of housework, encouraging women to hire housekeepers and cooks to release them from housework. Gilman uh, envisioned kitchenless houses and designed cooperative kitchens in city apartment buildings which would further help women balance work and family and provide some social support for wives who were still homebound. This would allow women to participate in the workforce and lead a more worldly life. Gilman uh, believed that women could desire home and family life but should not have to retain complete responsibility of these areas. Gilman stated that these changes would eventually result in better motherhood and fatherhood, better babyhood and childhood, better food, better homes, better society. So that's all about the uh, uh, the uh, book of women and the economics.